It is to inspire and not to instill fear that I ask, how far are you willing to go? If that question does not send a shiver up your spine, then I don't think you've given it much thought. Because I'm not asking you whether you're ready to get off your ass and vote. Or whether you're willing to bitch and moan on the internet. Or whether you're willing to wear ironic t-shirts to piss off your co-workers. I'm asking what you are willing to sacrifice. I'm asking what you are willing to risk. <coughs> but, as Seneca warned, we must be wary of the man who urges an action in which he himself incurs no risk. So, lest you think that what I'm about to say is old talk, lest you think I do not practice what I preach, or that I have not suffered persecution by those invested in the system, Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Augustus Invictus. I'm a member of the Executive Committee of the Libertarian Party of Orange County, and I'm a candidate for the United States Senate. I'm also a father, an attorney in four states and the federal courts, and a business owner. So I have a lot to lose. I'm also an old world pagan and a white southerner. So I know what it's like to be treated as the wolf in the hen house. I'm banned for life from my graduate business school. My law school in Chicago had me hunted by the FBI two years ago. Federal lawyers in Orlando had me investigated by the U.S. Marshals just last fall. Earlier this year, I was forced off a board of trustees for an Orange County school. I was trespassed just last week from my own office building, where I've had my law firm for two and a half years. And we are only at the beginning, my friends. So fear not that what I speak of tonight is somehow distant from my own life. A great man once said, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. And here I tell you further, think not that I am come to send a sword where I fear to tread. You know why the Christians were so successful? It is because they would rather have been crucified than to buy into the Roman system. You know why the communists were so successful? It's because they were willing to die for what they believed justice to be. Do you know why we and the French no longer have monarchies? It's because our revolutionary forefathers knew and lived what we cannot even admit to ourselves. That no fundamental change in government comes without great upheaval, without crisis, and without danger. We want change, but we do not want to fight for it. We want something different, but we do not want the disruption. We want better lives, but we want to live in blissful isolation, detached from the nastiness of the political world. But that is a fantasy, one we have believed in for far too long. Every creed and every flag has a thousand graveyards to honor. And if you do not like that, then go out into the wilderness and try to escape it. But mark my words, one day, someone with a flag, or a holy book, or a corporation, will come traipsing into your solitude, and they will conquer you and your family, and your weak stomach will have cost you dearly, for you will have abandoned not just your homeland, but your dignity as well. You must stand and fight for your flag and your creed. To run away is to delay the war for another day, to the disgrace of you and yours. We cannot escape the human condition. My brutal way of putting such truths is offsetting to many. 
When you hear my way of speaking and my solutions contrasted with those of more reasonable men, of men less insane, do not confuse vice with virtue. For many people think themselves good when they are merely docile. And many think themselves self-restrained when they are merely obedient. Many think themselves loyal to their country and to their party when they are merely too scared to stand up for themselves. So when you go home tonight, I want each of you to do something. I want you to look in the mirror and ask yourself, why are you doing this? Are you in politics because our reasonably righteous system just needs a few adjustments? Or because our system is fucked? Now if you think that we just need some modifications in government, but the things are generally going in the right direction and going pretty well, don't waste your time listening to me. Watch the televised debates. Hold your breath to see whether Clinton and Bush can pull it off in the primaries. Talk idly about how corruption displeases you. Vote on election day. And then keep complaining when nothing changes. Just forget I even exist. But if you are engaged in political action because you know that the system is fucked, then ask yourself one more question. Why are you so convinced that playing within the system could ever be the answer? And yet this is the answer our so-called leaders have been selling us our entire lives. Change comes slowly. Be patient. The system works. You just have to be a part of it. And the system will work for you. You don't hear the creed or the cult of the system therein. Be one of us, and the system will work for you. <coughs> Believe in the system, and it will work for you. Work for the system, and the system will work for you. I reject this cult and its creed. And I have taught my children what my father taught me. Be in the world, but not of it. Go to school and get good grades. Not because what they are teaching you is true, but because you need the piece of paper at the end to prove that you are educated. Because otherwise, no one will listen to you. Wear a tie and comb your hair, not because it makes you better than other people, but because it makes you presentable and proves that you can play the game. Because no, otherwise, no one else will listen to you. Read the newspaper and keep up on current events. Not because there is some intrinsic importance in what the media is selling you, but because you must be conversant in what those around you are thinking. Because otherwise, no one will listen to you. Do you know why artists are allowed to do and say whatever they like? <clears throat> it's because they are impotent. In the great world of man, where law, finance, and government comprise our framework of existence, artists have no power to affect our lives in any tangible way. The artist can be as free-thinking as he wants, because as long as he stays in the margins, this does not cross over into the real world, he does not threaten the system. And do you know why I am dangerous? It's not because anyone actually thinks that I'm going to lose my mind and go on a shooting rampage. It's not because I have a hundred pounds of fertilizer in a tool shed somewhere for bomb making. It's because I'm an artist who has wandered like a black wolf into the real world. It's because I have the power to turn the system against itself. See, when a schizophrenic man with disheveled hair spits and spews on a street corner holding a sign that says the end is nigh, it's easy to brush him off. We pass by him laughing. We repent not. But when I say, I have prophesied for years that I was born for a great war, 
It is no longer funny. People try to mock and they pretend to laugh me off like the guy on the street corner. Not because I'm uneducated or unpresentable or ignorant, but because when I speak, people have to listen. And for my critics to think that their sons and their daughters might be listening, to think they might reject the system that their parents bought into and sacrificed their lives for something real, that is terrifying. So they must resort to mockery because they have no arguments against what I am saying. If my critics stop being frivolous for five minutes and admit it to themselves that what I am saying is not half as insane as the fact that I am saying it in public, they would be forced to admit that they are living a life of compromise with the system. And I wonder which is more terrifying, to lose a child to a cause or to lose the respect of that child when she discovers that her parents were cowards who made a virtue of submission. I do not want you to submit. I want you to revolt. I want you to be total insurrectionists in mind and body, in spirit and in heart. I want you to be dangerous so that the system takes notice of you and turns its machines toward your destruction. I want each and every one of you to be a legitimate threat. I'm often asked why I'm running for Senate as a libertarian, as though being a libertarian were not reason enough. And I answer that I'm campaigning as a libertarian because the libertarian party is dangerous, or at least it should be, as the enemy of the two-party system. But our leaders want us to compromise our integrity and to play within the system. Our leaders want to be invited by the Republicans and the Democrats to their debates. Our leaders want to be politely included in the discourse. They want us to play the game created by the Republicans and the Democrats. Talk like them, strategize like them, conform like them, organize like them. But our so-called leaders have clearly never read Sun Tzu's Art of War. If they had, they would know you do not attack the fortresses of your opponent. You do not meet a stronger army on open ground. You do not fight against your opponent's strengths. If we had leaders, instead of bureaucrats and salesmen, we would be attacking our opponent's strategy, not their strongholds. We would not be begging for inclusion. We would be embracing our position as outsiders. So this is what I propose. Disown your leaders who have advised you to sell out. Stop trying to sneak into the two-party system and abandon your faith in it entirely. Stop playing their game and create your own. Stop trying to earn a comfortable spot in the system and infiltrate it to turn it against itself. Because otherwise, you are fighting a war you cannot win. Without first engaging in social and cultural insurrection, there can be no true political change. If you think you are going to save the world by electing a libertarian to the Senate next year, you are dreaming. And if that is your mindset when you go out posting my flyers and wearing my t-shirts, you are doing nothing more than polishing the brass on the Titanic. I do not want you to vote so much as I want you to wake up. I want you to drop out and tune in. I want you to take LSD and practice sorcery. I want you to listen to trap music and black metal, to learn the law and to break it deliberately, to find your own religion. I want you to learn the use of firearms and subject yourselves to rigorous physical training. I want you to treat your bodies as holy temples and take your girlfriend to a strip club so you can do, seduce a dancer in the back room. I want you to worship nature 
and dance naked in the moonlight, screaming with ecstatic joy. I want you to revolt, raise hell, break your limitations, go out into the wilderness so that God may tell you of things to come. The Christians were successful because they would rather have been crucified than to buy into the Roman system. The communists were successful because they were willing to die for what they believed justice to be. Our forefathers were successful because they knew that no fundamental change in government comes without great upheaval, without crisis, and without danger. We, all of us, must make sacrifices. We must see our fight for freedom not as a hobby or a volunteer opportunity, but as an existential struggle. If you think that we are going to vote a new country into an existence in the next election, or in the election after that, you are simply divorced from reality. The government of a people reflects the culture of a people. And if we have seen our government become frivolous, money-hungry, and willfully ignorant, then we have only ourselves to blame. The system cannot exist without our acceptance of it. So we must cut this corrupt system from our hearts. And that is something your leaders have proved themselves incapable of doing. They talk to you of fighting the system. And yet what sacrifices have they made? What persecution have they suffered? Have they given their lives for your freedom? Or have they made politics a career? Learn the difference and you will learn the mark of a true leader. The so-called leaders of the system have always pandered to the lukewarm. And with salaries and titles and benefits packages, they have bought off those strong enough to fight back. When you have an executive suite, a dental plan, a Mercedes, and a membership at a golf club like this one, why in God's name would you want to rock the boat? That would be insane. Who would want to risk imprisonment, death, or exile when Janet Jackson is coming to Orlando next month and I'm so close to that promotion at work and the kids started school today? Call it wisdom, if you will. I call it selling out. I call it a betrayal of your country and of your soul. But the uncontroversial, the cowards, the weak stomach, Stay far from me. I do not want sycophants and sheep in my camp. I want revolutionaries. Let the beer-gutted trolls and the safe old nannies keep far in my critics' camp. I want the brutal fighters, the voluptuous seducers, the promiscuous and quick-tempered. I want those of you who are so free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. Give me ten such youth, with that fire and self-discipline, and I will give you a new America. But I also want you, the law enforcement officers watching this video, the FBI agents and U.S. Marshals who have shown such an interest in me, the cops who will sooner or later come to arrest me. Though we are soldiers, we are not enemies. I will address you soon enough, but in the meantime, I want you to ask yourselves, which is the greater crime? Getting high on cocaine or the countless casualties of the drug war? Failing to pay one's taxes or the recklessness in raising our national debt to $18 trillion? Engaging in prostitution or selling out our children's generation. Search your own hearts. For the time may come soon when you must ask yourselves which you love more. Your country or your paycheck. That is indeed the question for all of us. We must decide where our loyalties lie. With our government with the politicians, or with our families. 
with those in power or with those we love. In the coming days, may the goddess bless our campaign and may God bless the United States of America.